What's going on, everybody? I'm Patrick from Powlax, where we create confident coaches because confident coaches create great environments for players. This video is an excerpt of our How to Beat a Zone video, where we discuss how we can use the Duke fade and follow principles to attack a zone that puts a short stick top center. This video is brought to you by Powlax.com. This is where we house and organize all of the Powlax lacrosse coaching content so that it's easier to find. And I'm just going to go through some of our sections right now, show you what it has to offer so that if there's ever a time you need more lacrosse content, you know exactly where to find it. Our first section is our master coach section. This is all of our strategy videos, our offenses, defenses, man up, man down, riding, clearing, some box videos. This is also where this video will live and it will probably be like the two-man game video that will be divided up into sections that correspond to each way that we are going to try to beat the zone. Our next section is the drill section. This includes offensive passing, shooting, dodging drills, defensive drills like approaches, concept drills to teach players concepts we're going to use in games, and of course, player favorite drills like the do scrapping drill, uh, general one-on-ones, and of course, West Jenny. Our next section is the skill development section. This is going to teach proper technique as well as how players can practice at home. And then my personal favorite part of this section is the guided wall ball. This is actually going to have players play wall ball while they're listening and it's going to tell them when to switch from one technique to the other so that they can spend 10 minutes getting the best wall ball session that they can. Finally is the new lacrosse section. This is what we want to send to any of our brand new players and parents to get them started off on the right foot. The first video is what is lacrosse. It's going to go over the origins of the sport as well as its modern representations and it's going to get players excited about being a part of the sport. There was an ESPN documentary about Jim Brown playing lacrosse a while back that's in that video. It, it absolutely hypes people up. And the final section in our new to lacrosse, which is really important, is the choosing the right stick. This is going to teach people about pocket mechanics so that when they buy a brand new stick, they either know to get it restrung or they just know that the stick might not work as well as others so that when their kid struggles, they understand that it's the pocket's problem, not the kid. And hopefully they just get a good stick so that the, the kid will enjoy the sport. The final thing I'm going to show you on Palax.com is the memberships. So the one I'm going to focus on is the silver membership, and this gives you access to the playbook PDFs that correspond to all of these videos, including this video. So what you do is you become a silver member for $5 per month, and you get access to my entire digital playbook. Then when you find something that you want, you just come to the videos. Let's say you want to do the Ohio State Pairs offense. Click on to that video, go to the page. And then you're going to click this PDF button below the video and it's going to download the playbook PDF for that. You can download it, print it out, put it in your playbook, have it forever, bring it to practice so you have something easy to reference. Idea in terms of drawing and dumping that we want to use is going to be the fade and follow. The fade and follow is an offense that Duke ran against Hopkins a couple years ago where basically we want to attack top center. And the reason we would attack top center in a zone is if they put the short stick top center. Now, in my diagram, I'm going to show you what it would look like against a zone where the midfielder here is the player in the zone, or is the short stick in the zone. Now, when we get to the video, they weren't running a zone, but the way the fade and follow works pretty much puts them into a zone anyway because the way the top three players move with each other, any slide that comes is going to basically have zone-like principles. And you'll see what I mean when we get into it. So, first off, they're going to run their traditional Q-like motion to get into the set, which for us is a sweep, a fade, a cut the middle, and a mirror. And now, as they play, once they're in this position, if the ball carrier, who's top center, carries to his left, the top right player is going to fade, and the top left player is going to follow. And they basically stay equidistant away from each other so that if a player does slide the other player is going to be open now as he tries to attack he's got a few options if he draws a slide he can then, an adjacent slide he can then throw to that next player and then he can shoot now if nothing is available in that set as he is rolling back and forth he also has the option to pass down to one of the wing players and then set a pick and it basically creates a weave motion. And the objective of the weave is to keep the top center player, um, who is a shorty, 
in the top center so that we can attack from a really great place right in front of the goal as we're playing. Now, the last thing I'll mention in terms of the fade and follow is that it's really about reading the field and not necessarily about, you know, we have to find this look or that look. And if you draw from the crease, it's the same basic idea. We're going to basically isolate all the slides and then feed the player who the defenseman slid from. So now let's watch some fade and follow. So like I mentioned, Hopkins is not in a zone defense. They are in a man-to-man -man defense. But once we get here, you're going to notice that they're going to operate like a zone. As this player carries to his left and rolls back, you'll see this defenseman show. So as he goes this way and then back, this defenseman will show. This player is going to fade. Now as he rolls back, he's going to press the middle. Same idea. You'll notice that these four defensive players are basically filling the, the, the top three and then crease position in the 3-3 zone. Nothing's there, so he passes it. He ends up weaving. They keep the shorty there. Um, this player takes a nice shot and play continues. Now as the ball comes back up top and they try to attack the short stick to the middle again, this time nobody slides and he has a nice little step down from about 12 yards where he scores. Now if we run it back a bit, you'll really see exactly how valuable this can be. If, if a team puts a shorty up top, that means they're trying to probably press out their poles on the right side of the field and the left side of the field. And what that's going to allow us to do with shorties inside is just press directly top center. Now, as this happens, you'll notice, I think this player's already committed. And so if he steps in, look at how nice that little pass to a step down is going to be if he does end up sliding. Definitely a great thing to run against the zone. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys thought down in the comment section. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Hit me up on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all of the above. Have a good one. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.